Welcome back, Authenticate fans. Today, I'm taking the P51D Mustang for a spin to try out my new Authenticate Mustang pedestal, this beauty here. It isn't quite finished yet, but I thought I'd make this video to explain a few things about the Authenticate system, particularly to people who are new to it. So, I'll give you a quick overview of what Authenticate is, and also, people have been asking me what they'll need to use the P51 controls, so I'll explain that, as there are things you can get started on right now while you wait for me to finish this pedestal. First and foremost, the motivation behind this project was my personal dissatisfaction with generic flight controls, clamped to a desk and nowhere near where they would be in the real aircraft. So, these are all fully functional controls, scale replicas that are mounted where they should be in the real aircraft. So it's kind of like a home cockpit, but the emphasis is on the tactile feel, rather than the full kind of wrap-around cockpit you expect when you think about a home cockpit. For three reasons, really. One, for me, I'm in VR, so it doesn't matter so much. Two, I don't have the space for a whole cockpit system. And three, I don't want to just commit myself to one particular aircraft. The other thing is everything is quick release. I'm flying with the P-40B throttle today because I haven't finished the P-51. Although here's a quick preview of it from my CAD system. But in a few seconds I could swap this whole setup to a Spitfire using these quick release plates. And if I just take my hands off the control here I could be swapping in a Spitfire throttle in, uh, whoa, better get back there. I could be swapping in a Spitfire throttle and, uh, and swap everything over to Spitfires. Let me get myself back here. Because this mounting system is a, a simple piece of aluminium tube. It's clamped to a monitor stand mounted upside down and so it detaches from your desk very easily using these two clamps. And this box I call the Universal Hub. It takes inputs from 10 authenticate controls. It's the only thing that has any electronics in it as well, which is a deliberate decision. It keeps the cost down. Just one of these USB cables at the back runs... Whoa! Just one USB cable from the back runs all your flight controls. Now, cost was a huge factor in coming up with this system, so the other thing important thing you need to know is that this all relies on 3D printing. It doesn't need anything fancy. A $200 3D printer and a $20 roll of filament is all you need to make this. And then you'd need to assemble it from the 3D printed parts and bits and pieces you can buy from Amazon and eBay. But there is no soldering. There is no metal work. I'll say that again, there is no soldering to this. It's press fit. There's no metal work, there's no electronics. Just put it together like Lego. So at some point I would suggest getting a 3D printer, but if you don't want to start there, you can get some help from the community. There is a, this is a free web project, and there are now almost a thousand people in the community, and among them are a few trusted guys around the world, with at least one in the US, who will print the parts for you, cheaper than you could get them done commercially. So if you want to get into this, and you want this pedestal here, and the P-51 throttle quadrant, which will come next, there are three things you can do to get started right now. Firstly, grab one of these monitor stands off Amazon. I'll put a link in the description. Secondly, this rig extension. I'll put a link to where you can buy the parts and the assembly notes. Then you can make this universal hub. Again, I'll put a link in the description. And then you're all set for when this pedestal comes out in a week or two, and then the P-51 throttle to follow, or this P-40B, you can print this straight away. That's available right now. If you're wondering where I'm flying today, I've been flying along the Amalfi Coast, past the beautiful villages of Amalfi, Positano and Ravello. And I chose this part of the world for two reasons. One, the area of Naples and uh, Italy in general was an important theatre of war for the Mustang P-51. And secondly, quite simply, it's just one of the most beautiful parts of the world. Um, as I round the headland here of the Amalfi Coast, you can see just on the nose there, 
we've got the Isle of Capri, or Capri, as the uh, locals say it correctly. And what I'm about to do is uh, round the headland here of the Amalfi Coast, and I'll then find myself on the Sorrento Coast. And then I'll, uh, well, the purpose of all this is just to show you these controls a little bit more on this pedestal. Let me point them out now. We've got the, let me just put a little bit more power on. I had that really down there on the throttle. And at the front, we've got the aileron trim. And then we have the rudder trim. And then we have the elevator trim. And um, let's just see if we go externally whether we can see some of these uh, do anything. So I'll um, see how visual it is. So I'll, I'll just put a little bit of elevator trim forward on now. And ooh, that's, yeah, that's plenty. It's very subtle, isn't it? You don't really see it. Um, but, but that's working very well there. And we're just coming around the coast now. There's Capri. And this is back inside. This is uh, the headland here. And we're looking into the Bay of Naples now. So right on the nose now, or just coming around on the nose, is the city of Naples. And in fact, the famous saying, I think created by the citizens of Naples, the Neapolitans, that would be, is that uh, is see Naples and die, which is a positive thing. I think it's related to the fact that it's a beautiful place and then you can rest in peace once you've seen Naples. So as we come round the Amalfi Coast, we come round to the Sorrento Coast. And where am I up to? Okay, so we've done the elevator trim and we've got the landing gear, which is correctly in the up position. And then we have the flaps. We've got the flaps lever set fully up at the moment. And difficult to do this in VR without losing orientation. Let's go externally and see if we can see the flaps kick into position. So I will just do that now. And I'll just, ah, there it is, I caught it. That's 10 degrees of flap and 20. Yeah, you can see those go in. And that goes down to 50 degrees of flaps. And the plan for this little bit of the video is that I'm going to land. I'm going to land at Cappuccino Airport, which is Naples International Airport. So hopefully we can put into practice a little bit of elevator trim as I put some flaps in and then we'll see those landing gear come down and see if I can pull off a landing. Anyway, so there's Sorrento, uh, namesake of the Sorrento coast, and I'm heading, actually, over to the left here, just slightly, that is Mount Vesuvius. So if I just line it up here, yeah, I'm now heading for Pompeii. So right on the nose is the famous buried in ash, town of Pompeii. So we've just passed over Vesuvius and off to the left about, should be about 10 o'clock, is Cappadocino, oh, there it is, there's Cappadocino Airport. It's about 10 o'clock. Where are we at? About 4,000 feet. Okay, let's take some power off here and let's see if we can make a landing. Okay, let's put a few more flaps in here now. Um, I'm actually in the Aeroplane Heaven version of the 51D. And I think that's got a slightly different configuration of flaps. I know in DCS it's zero, and then you've got 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. It's a fraction different in the, D, in the uh, Aeroplane Heaven version. But let's put, um, I think it's still 20 degrees of flaps for two clicks. And let's see those landing gear come down. Beautiful. Okay, let's see the rest of those flaps go in, all the way down to 50 degrees. Right, switching to external view and I'm making a, best, making a bit of a mess of my line up here.
Well, as they say, any landing that you can walk away from. And uh, I've just about got away with this one. Let's bring those flaps up. Right, well that is all I've got time today for folks. So just to recap, we've got the pedestal here. This is coming out very soon in hopefully a week or two. And it'll have all these controls on it, aileron trim, rudder trim, elevator trim, landing gear, flaps, the throttle quadrant. You've got the P40B version available now, but you can take the P51D when that's ready, which is um, it's going to be a few more weeks or a month or two for that. And then the stick. I'll be making the stick as well. So you've got that to look forward to. So why not subscribe? And then you'll be the first to know when the assembly video is released and you can get building this. But in the meantime, you can get the Authenticate hub and the mounting system and everything you need to build your Authenticate controls and have them working in your own home cockpit. Bye for now.